If you want to get the fats right in your dog's raw diet, it's not as simple as how much fat to feed. The types and the amounts of each different fat that you feed your dog can have a pretty significant impact on his gut health and on his inflammation. And this is important because an inflamed dog with an unhealthy gut will very likely become an unhealthy dog with unhealthy skin and organs. So let's look at how you should balance the fats in your dog's raw diet. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. Now there's quite a few different types of fats in the diet, but the main dietary fats are called triglycerides. Now triglyceride just means that these fats look like a little octopus with three arms and each arm is a glyceride molecule. Tri is Latin for three. Now, all three of the major fats have these three tails, but how those tails are shaped defines the type of fat and what it does in your dog's body. First, we have saturated fats, and these guys have straight tails. And this is why these fats are solid at room temperature. The straight tails allow the molecules to pack together really tightly. Foods that are high in saturated fats are coconut oil and lard. Now, here's the thing I want you to remember about saturated fats. New microbiome research shows that if your dog eats too many of them, then it can cause unwanted inflammatory changes in the gut flora. Now, unsaturated fats have one kink in their tails, while polyunsaturated fats have more than one kink. In fact, they can have up to 20 kinks. Now, these polyunsaturated fats, or PUFAs, are usually liquid at room temperature because those kinky tails stop them from packing together. Most plant oils are polyunsaturated. Now, PUFAs can be divided into two main types, omega-6 fats and omega-3 fats. Now, the main omega-6 fat is linoleic acid, while the main omega-3 fat is alpha-linolenic acid. Your dog can't make these fats, so they need to be in his diet. Now, I want you to think of these two fats as base fats. Because your dog can lengthen them to make other omega fats he needs. So, linoleic acid can be lengthened into two main omega-6 fats. One is a healthy anti-inflammatory fat called gamma-linolenic acid, or GLA, and the second is a pro-inflammatory fat called arachidonic acid. Now, on the other side, alpha-linolenic acid can also be lengthened into other fats that your dog needs. It can be converted to steridonic acid, or SDA, which can be lengthened again into an important anti-inflammatory fat called ETA, which can ultimately be lengthened into another anti-inflammatory fat called EPA, which can once more be lengthened into DHA, which is an omega-3 fat that builds healthy brains and eyes. Now, there's other fats along the way, but these are the major ones I want you to know about. Now, because there's so many steps involved to convert alpha-linolenic acid into ETA, EPA, and DHA, your dog can't manufacture a large amount of these fats. In fact, only about 5 to 10 percent of alpha-linolenic acid from your dog's diet will be converted into ETA, EPA, and DHA. And this is the reason why a lot of dog owners feed fish oil to try to get some EPA and DHA into their dogs. And this is important because a diet that's too rich in linoleic acid is inflammatory, especially if it doesn't contain enough alpha-linolenic acid. So the key when it comes to fats is to keep the amount of linoleic acid and alpha-linolenic acid about equal in the diet. Too much linoleic acid will be pro-inflammatory because it'll be converted to inflammatory arachidonic acid by using the same enzyme that lengthens alpha-linolenic acid into anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. So the bottom line is, the more linoleic acid in the diet, the lower the amount of anti-inflammatory fats produced. Got that?
Okay, so this is where it gets a bit weird. So you'll want to pay attention to this next part. And by the way, let me know in the comments if this is helpful and if you want more of this content. And of course, questions are always welcome. So I want to start by saying that food animals like chickens and cows don't eat the diets that they're supposed to be eating. And this changes their fats. You can see here that while animals like elk and deer have a much more even ratio of omega-6 to 3, grain-fed beef has a ratio of 7 to 1. And look at chicken. The ratio of 6 to 3 in chicken parts with the skin on is a whopping 28 to 1. That's incredibly inflammatory. Remember, those omega-6 fats ramp up inflammation plus they interfere with the conversion of alpha-linolenic acid to anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. So why do farmed animals contain a lot less omega-3 fats? Well, as I said, it's the foods that we feed them. So while grass-fed beef has a ratio of 5 to 1, grain-finished beef has a ratio of 7 to 1. Grains like corn and soy are rich in omega-6 fats, and it changes the fats in the cow that eats them. But it gets a lot worse if you're feeding poultry. While most cows, goats, and sheep eat grass for most of their lives and are only finished with grain at the end of their lives, chicken and other poultry are fed grain for their whole lives. Chicken feed contains things like dried bakery product, which is stale old Entenmann's and Krispy Kremes. And pigs eat the same diet with the same results. This modern commercial diet skyrockets the omega-6 fats in modern food animals and skyrockets inflammation in the dogs eating these foods. But that's not the only difference between food animals eating the right foods and those eating the wrong ones. If you compare deer to beef, it's pretty obvious that cows have a lot more saturated fat than deer do. And on the poultry side, chickens have a lot more saturated fat than their wild counterparts as well, nearly double in fact. And the consequence can be a dysfunctional gut and, once again, chronic inflammation. And if it's left unchecked, this inflammation can cause allergies, cancer, and can just plain old burn out your dog's organs. So the bottom line is raw feeders are giving their dogs foods that are inflammatory because of the way that modern food animals are raised. Plus, modern food animals contain more fat than their wild counterparts do. So I want to talk about how to feed a raw diet and keep the inflammation to a minimum. Because after all, you're feeding your dog raw to avoid health issues. So you might as well do it right. Okay, so the first key rule is that you have to keep the amount of fat to a reasonable amount. Remember, animals that are fed grains will carry more fat than those eating grasses. In general, you want to keep the fat to about 10%. And if you're not sure how to figure out how much fat that is, then I'll give you a video link in the resources below. It's pretty easy to figure out. Now, second, you need to feed as little omega-6 fat as possible. On the whole, ruminants like beef, lamb, and goat will carry less omega-6 fat than poultry will. But they'll also carry more saturated fat than poultry. So the best approach is to rotate ruminant with poultry. But never ever feed poultry skin. It's just too rich in omega-6 fats and this is really, really inflammatory for your dog. And the same applies to pork skin and fat since pigs eat the same diet as chickens do. And as an aside, rabbit is a really nice choice with low and balanced fats. So, rotating proteins and feeding lean cuts of poultry and pork without the skin will keep the saturated fats and the omega-6 fats to a decent amount. But you're not done yet, because you should add anti-inflammatory fats to the diet. 
This is kind of critical to your dog's health and to his gut health. Now, this is where most people add fish or fish oil to up the omega-3 content. But for me, I give my dogs green lip muscle oil. And that's because fish oil only contains uh, EPA and DHA. But green lip muscles also contain another anti-inflammatory fat called ETA. And ETA can easily be converted to EPA when your dog needs it. Now, the other anti-inflammatory fat, you'll remember GLA, that's only found in plant oils. So you want to give your dog some plant oils. The richest source of GLA is ahi flour, which also has a good supply of SDA, which is the precursor to ETA and EPA. Um, evening primrose and hemp seed oil are other good sources of GLA. So on the whole, modern food animals eat the same fast food, modern diets that we eat. And that makes them too fat. And it makes them carry too much saturated fat and too much linoleic acid. This imbalance in fats can mess up your dog's gut and cause chronic inflammation if you don't pay attention to it. So you need to feed lean meats and keep the fat around 10% rotate between ruminant and poultry, avoid poultry and pork skin at all costs, and supplement with a wide array of healthy omega fats, including green lip mussels and plant oils. Just this small amount of tweaking can have a tremendous impact on your dog's health. Now, if you have a question about balancing fats or raw feeding in general, just leave a comment below and I'm happy to help out. And most importantly, if you like this video, make sure you share it and tell people about it. Thanks for watching.